Welcome back to CBS This Morning. The COVID surge in Texas is largely driven by unvaccinated Americans, but there is growing concern the migrant crisis may be complicating the issue. The city of McAllen, Texas, says more than 7,000 migrants who tested positive for COVID have been processed since February, including more than 1,500 just this past week. Most do go straight into quarantine. Maria Virial got exclusive access to one temporary emergency shelter set up to test and treat migrants who have COVID. She joins us from McAllen, Texas. Maria, good morning. Well, good morning. This morning, I'm actually standing under the Ansaldúas International Bridge that leads into Mexico with a purpose. Because if you take a look from the sky and right behind me, you're going to see a makeshift processing site that is run by Border Patrol. So many people are crossing into the U.S. right now. They just have no room to put them in actual buildings. And with COVID in mind, decision makers believe that this, what you're looking at, is the best option they have. The enormity of the country's immigration issues is on full display underneath this busy stretch of highway. The site, run by Customs and Border Protection, measures well over the length of a football field with room to grow. Once agents process these migrants, most will board buses and end up here. A local park turned into a temporary tent city run by the city of McAllen and Catholic Charities. But the first thing that happens straight off the bus is COVID testing. Catholic Charities Director Sister Norma Pimentel says migrants testing positive for COVID has been overwhelming. But it got to a point where that, that space is not even that readily available because there's so many of them. In the last three weeks, McAllen has seen over 1,800 migrants a day, prompting Mayor Javier Villalobos to order a declaration of emergency. It is very burdensome for our county, our city, and we don't budget for this. We don't deal with immigration. We shouldn't. Across the entire southwest border, 210,000 migrant apprehensions were reported for July, a 21-year high that's caught the attention of conservative leaders across the country. If you just want to hopscotch across that border, they don't care about COVID. They're letting you straight in. A CBS News medical expert says the COVID-positive cases from across the border are relatively small and attribute the latest surge across the U.S. to the Delta variant, low vaccination rates, and rolled back restrictions. But local officials in Texas are already growing concerned. Initially, I didn't see it as a problem because it was under control. So I saw no correlation between the increase in COVID within our community and, and uh, the immigrants because they were isolated. But? Now I think there's an issue because now they're going throughout. Positive or non-positive, they get picked up and they're going out and we have no authority to stop it. So when you hear the governors talking about this being a problem now for the health and safety of the rest of America, am I hearing right? You agree with that? I totally agree with that. One city over, Father Roy Snipes leads Our Lady of Guadalupe. It, when we first started, it would be the, the, the highest number would be like maybe 200 a day, 200. Now it's 300 a pico, so that would be like 2,100 a week. They were using their empty schoolhouse as a makeshift shelter for the overflow of families. When one of the migrants tested positive last week, they had to shut down. But with a steady band of volunteers, he's committed to reopening. We've got plenty of beans and we've got plenty of rice and we've got, we've got plenty of room and we're doing fine. There's no desire for a solution? Of course there is. But that's beyond me. I'm a parish priest on the south side of Mission. I'll just, people come and tell me we need food and we need a place to stay. If right. I could fix it, I would, but I, uh, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a higher science than I know about. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas will be here on Thursday to talk with local leaders and to take a look at everything we just showed you right now. One of the biggest concerns, though, that these local leaders have is that they can provide the shelter, they can provide the food and the COVID testing, but they have no authority to keep anyone here, to force anyone to stay in these facilities. Vlad? All right, Medea, thank you very much.